see in the screen earlier, I want to make, want this in my exam room, nice and big, in 2029. Um, but as optometrists, we have one thing in common no matter what mode of practice we're in. We all help our patients see. And we all utilize any technology through time to make them see better, to meet all the visual demands that we have today. And today, we have the highest visual demands on our vision and our eyes that's ever been. We're all utilizing our computers, our tablets, our smartphones. And most of us, about 28% of us, are on our digital devices about well, more than 10 hours a day. And that's creating a lot of digital eye strain. And we're using technology also to combat against that, that eye strain in our digitally progressive lenses that are made. And now even we're hearing the buzzword about the anti-reflective coatings protecting us from the blue light from the technology we're using. In the world of technology, the big buzzword and with great anticipation is the world of wearables or wearable technology. And it makes sense that glasses and things in and around our vision are going to be a vehicle for that for the future. And if you really think about it, glasses are really the first wearable technology that was out there. So who out there has the new Apple Watch that just came out? All right, I see somebody, I see somebody out there with one. Uh, it was my birthday yesterday. You can get me one. You know, I'm here on Friday. You can give me a belated gift. But not only that, I was just thinking about where technology has come from. And thinking about in my parents' day when they saw Dick Tracy in the comic books or on television with it communicating on his watch. And now they have their kids out there and their grandkids utilizing that technology that way once thought was a fantasy is now a reality. You know, when I was a kid, I was looking at the back of the comic book and saw x-ray glasses for sale. But don't worry, it doesn't exist yet. Not yet. But also, in Back to the Future, they were telling us we would have flying cars this year. So they got till October. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you know, wearable technology is going to be a huge industry. And eye care is going to be involved somehow. And it's going to be a $30 billion industry by 2018. And I was actually reading another article that said up to $60 billion. And some even say wearable technology is going to take over use of our cell phones and computers. Imagine that. But a lot of different companies are out there creating different wearables. They're creating things like the Apple Watch. They're trying to get in on the ground level with all this money to be made in the future. The Fitbit, which now is tracking our steps and telling us how many calories we burned, even telling us our sleep patterns. The clothing industry has gotten involved. And they're making clothing with technology within it to tell us our fitness goals. And also even jackets with solar panels on them that are charging up the devices that we actually have. Even in our industry, VSP has gotten involved. And they actually are working on something called the Genesis Project. And what they're doing is they're taking technology and seamlessly putting it into the temple of the frame. They're putting things like gyroscopes and accelerometers uh, they're working with other technology companies to see where this is all going to go. Uh, they don't know yet, um, and we don't know how this is going to fit into our offices one day. So when I was talking to Dr. DeRose uh, about doing this talk, uh, we were talking about all the cool stuff that's coming out, all the gadgets, stuff like Google Glass, which I'll get into as well. But as an optometrist that works in low vision, specifically one with technology in low vision, I wanted to ask, how is wearable technology helping those people who are blind and visually impaired? Where we're in a world now today where all this technology is creating the need, sort of like how we all need our you know, phones and tablets and everything else, but really in this population, in any, for any disability, visually impaired or anything else, really need needs to create the technology. So, in the world of wearables, specifically smart glasses, they're making many things in and around our eye and our vision. And all of these things really need our vision to be functional. So the first thing, and I'm sure everybody's heard of, or maybe someone has had it, is Google Glass. And Google Glass is basically utilizes something called a heads-up display. And basically you look up into the right into the screen, and you see the visual inf the information. And you can do things like communicate with the, in with the internet, you can take photographs, and you can take video. Um, 
in 2012 when the idea of Google Glass was first introduced. And ironically enough, it was actually introduced to a blind association in San Francisco. In 2013, they came up with their prototype. And they called uh, these people the ex explorers, Google Glass explorers. And it was a group of people that they put together to, as a prototype to give feedback back to the company of where this technology is going to go. So they got it at a reduced cost, and they were using it. Well, a couple of things happened. Some people felt it wasn't as useful as they would be. There was a lot of hype about it. And then there was a little bit of social faux pas, where people were afraid that they were being videotaped or being uh, photographed without their knowledge. So a lot of people actually were thrown out of places wearing their Google Glass. Um, in 2015, this year, they uh, decided to put it on the back burner, and uh, they're taking it back to, the, back to the labs, and they're looking how this technology will grow for the future. Um, they're thinking more in like healthcare or industry rather than direct to the consumer. And I did see this morning actually on Facebook that uh, someone was using it as a Google Glass as a teaching tool to teach how to do a scleral buckle surgery. So we'll see how this is going to come into our offices into the future as well. This is just another kind of display like Google Glass, but again, it's specifically then to uh, the cyclists or bicyclists. And it gives them their information about their speed, their incline, decline, and how far they've gone. And they can even put it to their phone uh, to, be, uh, to see who's calling. Now, who wouldn't want also to use glasses like, to like Tony Stark? This amazing technology. This is called augmented reality, and it's coming. So what augmented reality is, it basically takes the information and puts it within the lens and it's overlaid upon the real world, much like we see in the Iron Man movies. And this is actually something that's coming out. It's called MetaPro Space Glasses. And if you haven't seen this yet or gone to their website, it's really interesting. So basically, you're going to be able to use your computer, like this picture shows up here, virtually on a table in front of you, or even use your iPhone. And uh, actually, I saw a review about this, and someone mentioned that uh, it's like Google Glass, but on steroids. And this is supposed to be, their website says, coming out this summer. We all know about virtual reality, so basically they're immersed in a virtual world. And one company of note called Oculus Rift, and this is how big wearable technology is going to become, is basically just got bought out for $2 billion at the beginning of this year. Um, makes me think I should have been a computer geek and not an optometry geek. But we're going to see patients coming in utilizing these things because many people have vertigo from using this. And they're going to come in telling us about their vertigo and their headaches. And we're going to say, stop gaming. So another category in the world of wearables and smart glasses, not just those three categories, being heads up display, augmented reality, and virtual reality, is where, what I call wearable accessible technology. And really, what is it and where are we going with it? Well, what is it? It's basically a wearable device that's designed from the ground up with the visually impaired person in mind, not as an app, as an afterthought. And where are we going with it? Well, there's a lot of great minds out there that are working in the fields of computer vision that are working on things to make computer devices see like human visual perception. So what I want you to do is just think about your patients in certain scenarios. Think about your Starbucks patient who has 2200 vision or your RP patient who's no light perception, or our AMD patient who's got 2080 vision and can't read anymore. Now think about that you've sent them to the low vision optometrist, they have every device at their disposal, and they're utilizing it successfully. They're using their CCTVs, they're using uh, their JAWS program, their, their magnification software, and their scanners. And, but think of scenarios that they're in where wearable technology might come into play, especially wearable accessible technology. Think of that of, of a woman who goes to work and now has a meeting, and they hand her right away an agenda for that meeting, and she can't tell what it, what, what it says, has to go back to her office to utilize her scanner so she knows what the meeting's about. Or a guy who's stuck in his basement where he keeps all of his low vision equipment because it's so big he can't carry it around, while his family is upstairs in the family room, and he can't be with them. He's stuck and relegated to his basement with all of his low vision equipment. 
or the elderly person who's retired and now all they want to do is be able to read again and sit in their living room and read or go down to the local Starbucks and be able to read. Well, like I mentioned, the need really needs to create the technology. Let's go next. But there's many challenges to creating uh, wearable accessible technology. Um, how do you make something for people who cannot see? Um, it needs to be, first of all, since it's wearable, it needs to be made as a portable device. It needs to be affordable. Technology gets very expensive when it first comes out. And it needs to be easy to use. A lot of our patients in low vision are elderly. They maybe have never even used a cell phone, rather even turned on a computer before. So how are they going to use this technology? And also, it should work through all types of vision loss. It's a lot to ask for. But when doing my research, I found something very interesting. And this is not a wearable technology, but this is something actually for the blind that was invented over 100 years ago. It was invented in 1913, and it's called the Optiphone. And it's just showing where things have come from in the past to now. And what it did is the user put on a pair of headphones, and it would read letter by letter, and it would give a different tone or sound for the letters. Now, it read very slow. It was about one word a minute. But you can see where we've come to, even with things like, let's say now, this is like the ancestor to OCR technology. One of the first things I wanted to tell you about wearable accessible technology for the visually impaired is the, something called eSight. And eSight is something from Canada. It's a Canadian company, but it is available everywhere. And what it is, it's basically a pair of glasses that has a video camera in it. And that video camera is taking images in real time and displaying it on two LCD screens right in front of the patient's eyes. The patient through a remote is able to zoom in and zoom out up to 14 times. They're also able to customize it. They're able to change the contrast, the color, and the brightness. And people can see distance with this. People can read with it. You have to have some vision, so not for the totally blind. It is anywhere from, the, I saw a, a review of this, about 2060 to 2400 vision, and about 15 degrees or more of visual field in order to be able to use this. They've gotten a lot of media attention lately. They were recently on uh, Doctors that I saw a clip of, and it was very interesting with a young 23-year-old girl who had star guards, and they put it on her for the first time, and she was able to see her sister's facial expressions for the first time in years. So it's a very interesting product. It is a high-cost product, and the company is working with uh, uh, fundraising and, and charities for people to be able to afford it. Another interesting, very interesting uh, type of technology that's uh, coming out, this is not available yet in the US. I read it's available um, in uh, Europe right now. It's called Brainport. And what Brainport does is they basically are saying, while the brain can still, the brain can still see, even though the eyes cannot. And the brain basically codes sensory information in the same way for any other sense. So they need an alternative or an alternate sensory input to the brain so they can get to the visual cortex. And they utilize the tongue. And what it does is the camera takes a pic it basically takes a picture and sends sensory impulses or electronic impulses to, some, to, to the tongue, to a piece, as you can see here, her wearing this on her tongue. And people say who use this that it feels like champagne bubbles on their tongue. It doesn't hurt. But people are actually able to see shapes, size, motion, and location of objects while using this. They have a really neat video on their website of a guy playing tic-tac-toe with his daughter who's blind. And they have, even have him doing indoor rock climbing, better than I can do, and utilizing this device. Uh, and we'll see where it goes. The company does state it takes about uh, 10 hours of training to learn how to use this, to train sort of your brain to, to recognize objects, uh, usually within about one to two weeks uh, after 10 hours of training. The last device I'm going I'm to talk about here is uh, OrCam. And OrCam is out of Israel, out of Jerusalem, Israel. And the company was founded in 2010. And in the, the idea of OrCam, or the OrCam concept, 
uh, came about after its founder uh, graduated with his doctorate in vision, vision, uh, computer vision science. And his aunt, who had macular degeneration, came up to him and said, great, you're a doctor. Now you can help my vision. And he said, well, I'm not that kind of doctor. But then he got to thinking of how can I help my aunt? And this is what he came up with. And this is what we have today. Or, or cam, and what is it? It is a uh, intuitive, portable, smart camera that attaches to the user's already glasses. And it basically speaks what it sees to the patient through a bone conduction earpiece. It's pretty amazing technology. People can then recognize text. It recognizes text and it reads them. So they can read a newspaper, they can read a magazine, menu, and they can take it on the go. It also recognizes products that they teach it. And part of the newest update in the software is that it has facial recognition. Uh, training to use the device, people within seconds, they're already reading, but it usually is a two to three hour session, a one-on-one -on -one session to learn how to use all the advanced features of the device. Uh, it's a very unique item in how you interact with OrCam. Basically, you just point your finger, and OrCam knows, the camera knows, that you have an interest in something to see, and it will take a picture based on recognizing your finger. So how, I want to ask again, how is wearable technology helping people who are blind and visually impaired? Well, it's really creating independence. So if you remember back to the patients that I explained in those scenarios, well, those are real patients. Those are people who are out there. That woman who walked into her you know, office, our office meeting now can read that agenda, that paper, piece of paper they gave her instantly, in real time. That guy who was rele relegated to his basement with all his low vision equipment, he's now uh, able to stay in his family room or sit in the kitchen with his family while maybe reading the mail or reading a magazine. And that guy who's an avid reader who wants to sit in his easy chair, he can sit in his chair and read from a book rather than sitting next to a computer and having it read to him or putting it on a scanner. And he can take that book over to Starbucks and sit and read and be with everybody else. So it's really creating independence and we're going to see where all this technology goes. There is so much technology coming at us these days. Uh, there are new things each and every day. Um, you know, they're working on things that are totally amazing that probably we can't even think of right now. I know of, and maybe many of you do, that we're actually working now on autonomous driving vehicles. And one day we're going to have self-driving cars. It's amazing. So I also like to think that because of that, one day the blind will also drive. Thank you.